Episode 246 of the Bevan James Hour Show. I've had a health scare. Radio right, team, welcome along to episode 246 of the Bevan James. I'll show you a fortnightly podcast on the behaviors that create a lifetime love of exercise. And today's show is going to be short and it's going to be a little bit different because unfortunately I had a health scare in the last seven days of my life. So I thought I'd just tell the story and you know me, I'll, I'll probably try to share some insight and some learnings that have come along with this story. Um, but but basically, it's, 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 she's going to be a pretty quick one today. So uh, where do I start? So basically, about oh, Saturday night a week ago, a couple of weeks ago, or yeah, basically about 10 days ago, I went out for dinner and I got home. And sometimes if I either eat too much or if I eat a combination of foods that just don't work for me, and when I say sometimes, this happens like once every 18 months, I can get a sore stomach, but also a real kind of stabbing pain in my back. And it's kind of I get home and I feel I feel really miserable and I'll take some some you know some drugs and I'll kind of lie down in bed and groan and be miserable for like five six hours. But if I take some drugs, it kind of slowly dissipates to the point where you know I finally get a couple of hours of sleep or I, on a, it's often on a Saturday night, so I get to sleep on a Sunday morning. My next day might be a bit average, but I'm okay. And again, this happens what like once every eighteen months. So when it happens kind of know the process, you know, I kind of know that this is how it's going to happen, and so last Saturday night, or a couple of Saturdays ago now, uh, that happens, get home, feel a bit miserable, lay down, I often get quite sweaty as well, so a bit sweaty, working through the night, and in the morning, I felt better, but I was still, I just felt sick by this stage, the back pain had gone down a little bit, the stomach pain wasn't so intense, but I definitely, for the Sunday, I felt a bit sick. So Sunday goes along and at this stage I was feeling kind of by the end of the day I was feeling a little bit better and um, so much so that I teach my runners in the morning, I coach my runners in the morning, I teach two classes at the gym the next day and if I, th- I was in that point where I thought you know what I think I'll be okay to do my job tomorrow so I didn't even really get back up for the next day which is in retrospect maybe not the wisest move. So I wake up the next morning and it was pretty obvious I was not going to be able to work that day so um, somebody else took my coaching job for my business and I got in contact with someone at the gym and they looked after the classes at the gym but at this stage I'm still just kind of feeling a little bit sick. I went upstairs after maybe eight in the morning, kind of set myself up on the couch for the day. I thought, you know, a good chance to watch some movies. And uh, I don't really, I like, I love movies, but I hate long movies because you often get, you know, three hour movies a big commitment. So I thought it's a good chance to watch a couple of movies. And I think I watched, I started watching the new Matrix, which I kind of thought, you know, I wanted to watch it, but it was like nearly three hours long. And if I fell asleep, it didn't really matter. So I kind of started watching the new Matrix and I kind of watched it for about an hour and a half. And then I started shaking, and, and like shaking a bit uncontrolled, not like not, not, not full on, but a shake, you know, you're kind of getting the shakes, and they're kind of building in time, and, um, and I start groaning as well, I'm kind of shaking and groaning, and feeling really, really not in a good place, and I kind of vaguely remember Joe coming upstairs, we have, we have a two-story house, and our lounge is upstairs, and Joe's office is downstairs, so Joe was working downstairs, and I heard her come into the lounge and she said to me, should we go to after hours? Now, sometimes I'm an idiot. And the reason, I, and so what happened was she goes, should, I, should we go to after hours? And I said, call them first because they are always hopeless. And the reason I said this was that earlier on the year, I had a bit of an ankle injury, which I felt I needed to be scanned. So I thought I'll get up really early in the morning so I can beat the cues at this place. And it still took me like six hours to get to see a doctor. So I thought, what's the point if it's going to take forever? And that's the last thing I remember. And then I wake up, it's the next day, it might have been 9.30 in the morning, and I'm in the IC unit, ICU unit, which is the intensive care unit here in Christchurch. And um, things up my nose, I can't talk, tubes in me everywhere, I've got tubes in my neck, tubes in my body, things are everywhere. Um, luckily for me, I'm not a panicker. And I just kind of woke up, said, okay, Joe, obviously 
got me to this place. Now, what I didn't know was at this moment was how horrific it had been. So basically, I collapsed, start spewing, basically faint in my wife's arms, which for my poor Bradley wife, um, you know, she lost her father this year. It's been a really tough emotional year um, for her to have to kind of deal with this moment. She calls the ambulance, they, they're taking their time. She calls back. Um, and at this time, I'm kind of, you know, she, she's not knowing what's happening. Um, three ambulances have, have to end up helping me. We have a building site next door to us right now at the moment. And uh, three of the builders had to help the ambulance people. Um, luckily, our neighbours, Nick, who was who's building the house next door, was next door at the time. And she came and supported Joe a little bit at that time. But no one knew what was happening. And even as I get into the ICU, apparently nobody knows what's happening. So... It was it was pretty terrifying for my family. And my family had one of those nights where, um, you know, who knows? You know, who knows? So it was it was pretty scary. Now, when I woke up in the morning, they'd they'd scanned me, so they put me through an MRI machine. And luckily for me, it turned out that basically all they could put their finger on was that my appendix seems to be kind of having problems, you know, and so and, and at the end of the day, it turned out that, that, that that's all it was. Is basically, I just had a really bad appendicitis. Um, and so, the, you know, basically throughout the week, I end up getting a, an appendix operation. But they, they've they never seen the symptoms of what, the point that I got to. We, you know, basically three ambulances to the house and all the rest of it. And uh, so, and through, through the whole week in this process, they were testing me for everything, they, 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 you know, because... I'm extremely fit, so you know my heart rate basically sits at forty. For a forty-five-year-old man, it's kind of ridiculous. And so every nurse who would check me go, "Oh my god!" And even in ICU, they're like, "This is crazy." So they thought my heart may have problems because I'm so fit. And sometimes with fit people, their hearts, because the heart is a muscle, so it kind of grows, and that can create a problem. And so they scanned all these things, and it turns out, which you would expect, that my body is really healthy, and none of the things they tested could conclude that that was the case um and so it's gone down as a mystery like why i responded to an appendix problem which um you know ultimately uh is, is, is normally a pretty minor thing and can, on scale of reasons to have an operation um you know they, they don't know so the good news is is that I'm in a good place. Now, it was a really tough week because one thing that happened to me was I wasn't allowed to eat. So I basically didn't eat any food for over two and a half days. And so it was a bit of a miserable week in my life as I'm um, just, you know, you're lying in bed, you know, not moving at all. Or, or no, I was moving, but you're kind of just lying there miserably. You're, you're like, I could have so tired. And one thing, like, we've got an amazing hospital system here in New Zealand and um and we've got a new hospital in our local region so you kind of get your own room which is really cool but one of the downfalls is it's very quiet i'm sorry it's very loud um you hear lots of ringing the 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 walls are very thin and so you kind of hear what's happening in the rooms next to you so i basically didn't sleep for two and a half days and i didn't eat for two and a half days so i was just in a bit of a like i'm a positive soul and i knew i was going to be fine and i kind of in my mind i always just think time will get me through this so I knew I was going to get through it but it was definitely a place where when man, that first food came I was a very very happy man so then I got the operation um you know today this is two days post-op um a little bit of soreness because just stuff with the operation uh, a little bit of fatigue because I didn't sleep very well for last week, uh, and not much food, I've lost a bit of weight, and I'm not the biggest guy at the best of times, so I had to work on a bit of weight within that, and uh, so I need to put on a bit of calories into my body, but overall, cheapest creepers, I cannot complain, I'm in the best place in, you know, considering the place that I'm in. Now, secondly, um, uh, I want to say a massive thank you to who to all the people who helped me in this process. Uh, the, the medical professionals in New Zealand are amazing. With and I imagine this is anywhere in the world. So if you're anywhere in the world, and you work in medicine. The, the thing that the thing that really shines is a they do their job well. So you you always feel very updated, they communicate really well. Um, but b they, they they just have a heart. 
You know, and one of the things in New Zealand that's a big problem in health and fitness right now, or not in health and fitness, in medicine, is that they, they seem to be underpaid. So there's this massive problem around um, negotiations around pay and medical, medical pay. So these people are working in conditions where they feel undervalued and underpaid. And at the same time, you'd never know it because they have so much heart, so much caring, and they just make you feel like you are you know, you're in, in really good hands. And so I want to say a massive thank you to all those people. Um, I put one post on uh, Instagram and Facebook just kind of telling the situation. I got a lot of great feedback on, or not feedback, just a lot of um, people just saying good luck and all the rest of it. So that was cool as well. And then uh, thirdly, um, just my friends and family, you know, it's a pretty scary time when you come to this moment in your life where you're that death question is put in their head um, and I'm, I'm very lucky and actually one thing that really happened that was pretty special I was in ICU and the ICU new, new nurse ICU nurse a lady by the name of Ash she said to me Bevan geez you can tell you're really loved aren't you and uh, it's because I had this just amazing friends and family around me so um, yeah it was in some ways it's been a scary week but it's also be a really a reaffirming week, and so um, yeah. So today's pod, I, I, I'll, I'll give you a couple of insights on what I learned this week. But I, today, I just don't, obviously don't have the time and energy to kind of spend. And I know I actually want to get an interview, but that's kind of obviously I don't get the time to plan that. So, um, but I'll give you a couple of insights. Um, it did give me a lot of time to think. Uh, I was fatigued thinking, but it made me realise when you have no actions in life and all you have is thinking. It made me realise which which areas of my life which dominate my thinking in some ways, um, and dominate my thinking, and maybe concern, and so that was a really interesting thing to reveal, and it also also made me think about um, I did some deep thinking in some areas of concern, and and also some thinking about where I need to take some action. So in some ways, there's been value in this this time, which is really good. Um, secondly, give back a lot. And what I mean by this is, as much as the health professionals were phenomenal to me, I made sure I was the greatest client or person that they were trying to help as well. So I gave back a lot. Lots of positive of praise, lots of telling them how much I supported their help. Thank you for everything. You know, just your basic stuff. But again, these people work hard. They can put a lot of energy in and... Um, you know, I think it's really important. People want to feel valued. Um, and I think that's really important. And, and a good example of that is Jo's been, my wife's a star. She's, I'm, I'm, I married the best woman in the world. And um, I wanted to do something special on the, the night after the op. And so I knew I was getting the op at one stage. I rang my local florist kind of at 10 o'clock in the morning. We've got this really cool local florist that... You know, if I'm going to buy some Joe loves lilies, so if I'm going to buy some lilies, I'll go in there, and you kind of get to know your local people. And um, and I rang him at ten o'clock, and I said, "Look, would you be able to get um, some, you know, a bunch of flowers to my wife today?" And he said, "Oh, look, the the, 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 um, uh, the the delivery van's gone out for the day, so it's probably not going to be able to happen." And I said, "Oh, is there any chance we can make this happen? Because it needs to be no. It wasn't that it wouldn't happen again today, but it needs to be happen by one o'clock because my wife was going to be going out later on." Um, and he and he said, "I'll try my best." Well, he did, and he delivered. And Joe said, "You know, the flowers were pretty important to her as well." And obviously, I said thanks at the time, but I then went back and wrote him a message just saying, um, you know, how this situation had happened and. Um, you know, just how much I appreciated his work. And he went above board in a moment where, you know, like he's, he's, he's a bus- and he delivered himself. He's a local business owner. He's got a busy day. You know, he could have he could have said, you know, I'll try and, and if it hadn't happened, that's cool. But he went the extra mile for me. And I just think it's really important in life. And it's actually one thing I'm trying to do in life right now is, is at the end of my day, is the last day, last moment, is to spend time thinking the people in my day. So it's literally, you know me, I'm such a planned person. So, you know, at the end of the day is to text the people who have done great things or show peer appreciation to those people who have helped you. Um, or, you know, and I just think there's a there's a higher level of value when it comes to that. And uh, I think that's one thing that we 
you know, as I look at this week, as I did make the nurses and the doctors and that feel appreciated. And I, and I, and I tried to do a high level of it. So, for example, when I was in the ICU room, Ash, she was training another young nurse. And Ash was a really high level communicator, like really good at communicating with me. But she was also just a really high level communicating at edu- educating someone else. Like, she, you know, I love language and I love watching how people use language in ways to or just in, in the many different forms. And Ash was just brilliant at making this young girl take ownership, um, but also feeling backed, um, praising her, supporting her, challenging her in, in, in ways, but also guiding her. And she was just this really highly advanced motivator, and, and oh, sorry, a communicator. And so I just kind of said, you know, I said to her one time, at one time she said, geez, Ash, you're a really amazing communicator. And she said, oh, thanks, that means a lot. You know, we try really hard to make the patients feel that they, what's going through. And, and she took it as that I feel safe and I feel in good hands, which was true. But uh, but the real higher point was she was a good communicator at, at helping the other person. So I basically said, oh, no, I, I, what I really mean is, well, I, I, you know, I didn't say no, but I said, yeah, well, I feel that too. But also... You know, you're really good at communicating with the girl she was helping, and, and the reason is because you do this, this, and that. And she said, oh, I really appreciate that. And, you know, Ash probably knows this anyway, but it's one of those things that you can reinforce. So that's been one thing. Uh, probably the challenge for me right now is that kind of getting back on the horse safely. Um, and I'm, I, I think I'll be patient with that. You know, and after my back operation, I have definitely learned you're better off to be wise through that process. So, so for, for the next moment for me, it's basically keep some movement in. I won't do much this week. I'm going to go for a 30-minute walk today. Um, I'll eat really well. I'll sleep really well. I can do work, so I'll kind of do enough work each week this week, but with no pressure around it. And, um, and then we'll kind of just see how it goes. So, you know, it's kind of the way I'm approaching it. So, um, for those who are patrons, I'm not going to do the patron thing for the show, just because obviously this is not really an education show, it's just kind of sharing something for you guys. Uh, for those who have sent support already, thank you so much. Uh, if you, uh, you know, uh, I'll do my plugs. If you want to get my book, go to passionateaboutexercise.com. If you want to get... Um, uh, if you want to become a patron, you go to bevanjamesisles.com, click on podcast, click on support me. And uh, other than that, thanks so much for your support. As always, keep being you, and I'll be back in the next show. Lots of energy, lots more healthier. And uh, as always, keep being you. Mm-hmm.